I think there's a failure in connecting with your, exactly. with your people. Yeah. And so I can't really help a guy if I don't know where he's at in his life, what he's going through, yeah. uh, at home maybe, or, or difficulty or any adversity that he's going through or has been through. Um, I like to get to know people, man. Get to know your people that are in the trenches working with you and ultimately, at the end of the day, for you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. Today we have... Nathan Wells. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. I do too. So, a little secret behind the scenes uh, for those of you that are watching. You've got the, uh, the wolf skull here. This is actually Nathan's. And uh, we stole this from him when we started the podcast, and we apologize for that. It's okay. <laughs> But, uh, I tracked Nathan, that wolf down when I was 15 <laughs> years old and killed him with my own bare hands own and kept his head. B-E-A-R hands. Mm -hmm. So this is episode, what is this, 92? Episode 92 of the Sales Wolves Podcast. Um, honored to have Nathan Wells on with us here. Nathan, <clears throat> uh, business partner, longtime friend, uh, but he's the chief learning officer, which means he's in charge of training all of our agents all over the country. And so in this particular episode, we wanted to take a little different take. A lot of times we're talking to sales people about how to become better in sales. But, you know, in this podcast, being able to actually transition into those of you that have teams of people, those of you that are in a management or leadership role, um, how to train better, how to coach better, how to lead better. Um, and there's no one better to do that uh, than Nathan, for sure. So let's kind of start that conversation off um, first in just giving everybody an idea of when that transition took place and what that transition was like when you went from selling yourself in the field um, on a daily <laughs> basis to then that transition into actually helping others. Well, one of the things that I noticed right away when I started actually training people on how to sell our product, I actually got much better at selling the product myself. Hmm. Uh, I began to realize why there were certain nuances, certain things that I did a certain way. Um, when you wanna teach someone how to do something, the basics or the technique of something, you really have to understand it yourself. Yeah. And so when I started doing a lot of the training, I got better myself. Um, through years of doing the training and working with people and doing it myself, um, as a trainer, I found myself at times being in the field and being able to feel like, okay, I can take a break. I'm not having to do the grind every day like this person. And so there was, I remember there was a season when I, when I kind of took a back seat mm. to the training. Yep. And um, that was, I saw a clear, um, the, the phase, the fast track on their performance was stunted. Hmm when I took a back seat and tried to coach with watching them and coach them after the fact. Role playing with them, yeah. face to face, that's really easy. But when I got back to feeling like I was not as sharp as I needed to be, mm -hmm. the only way you can do that is re-engage yourself, role play yourself and get yourself doing what your, your sales team has to do yourself. Yeah. And so I think from what I know, now this is primarily what I've always trained in is our product, our system, our company. But I hear of sales managers, sales trainers, and things like that telling people how to do things and removing themselves and forgetting how it actually is done themselves. Hmm. Uh, and that's why I'm still in the field today. Yeah. You know, uh, eight, nine years later, I'm still actively doing what our team has to do. Yeah. And I feel like today I'm better than I've ever been personally selling myself. Um, but I know for a fact that I'm much better at helping our guys be better at this than I've ever been because I'm still engaged in the field doing it myself. And I feel like as people are listening to this or watching this, they can all picture in their mind that, that sales manager, that boss they had that did lead by example. And then they can also picture probably more in their mind that boss or sales manager they had that taught from a place of never having experience 
of doing it. Mm-hmm. And there's such a difference in the two. And leading by example is, to me, the only way you can, can truly lead. Um, but with what you're doing, not only the aspect of it keeping your skills refined, but being able to teach and train off of current credibility. The opportunity for you to go out on the field with someone and you do the first call. They do the next call. You do the first call. But the ability for you do, to be able to do the call, to be able to do that first appointment, to be able to do that first whatever part of the prospecting or whatever part of the sales process, sales cycle, then being able to put their eyes on you and see you do it, and not just do it, do it like masterfully, is a game changer. Because how are they going to, how is a person going to say, okay, I'll do what you say if they can't see what you do? Like it just doesn't work like that. And so, I think the way that we've set things up here where you're going out there and you're in the trenches with them, um, really it creates a level of respect on the front end, but then it makes it to where like they know exactly why they're doing the things that they're doing. I think uh, I just did a podcast with a, a guy, JP Donnell, um, a couple hours ago actually, a former Navy SEAL um, guy, and he was talking about when you have a mission – it is so important to understand the why. And I think that's a lot of what you're training people on is that, hey, this is how we do this part of the script. But here's why we do it that way. It's because when you say it this way, you're making that person answer it in this way and this way. If you Let's, let's just say an easy example of training point of not asking, um, does December 12th work? Because that's a yes or no question. But asking, does December 12th or December 15th work best? Absolutely. But explaining to them, that like, don't just say like, hey, say it this way. No, say it because now you're giving them two options. So it's an either or, not a yes or no. And they're going to be more apt to you know, confirming a yes or, or a uh, either or than a yes or no. But explain the why behind it. And when people understand the why, then they'll follow through with the actual Absolutely. action item. Um, so what are some of the things that you've seen being out in the field with people that are like the the like – easy, you know, when you go out there, you're going to be able to catch this, this, and this, this, those easy things like people like cutting corners or people, are there things that you certainly, that you see when you go out that's just consistent every time that people are like making mistakes in that you can go ahead and fix real easy on the front end? I think the number one thing, um, we have technology to our advantage, man. When I started out, you know, in business, uh, at 20 years old as a business owner, Um, Had I had the technology we have now with social media, even with a cell phone, uh, being able to use a cell phone correctly and send the emails and everything that we can, all the things that we can do now, I think one of the number one things that I see with salespeople is weakness on the phone. Mm -hmm. Weakness on cold calling, weakness through going through the door, picking up the phone. You literally have got to treat that as it is the one thing you've got to do is form relationships, make contacts, and get yourself in front of people. And I think people literally uh, are just man. They're like in a they're like in third gear when they need to be in sixth, seventh gear, just hammered down fully on the accelerator. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're working, man, work. Uh, if you want to play, that there's another time for that. Um, is it weakness on the phone or is it resistance? To the phone. You know what? Most people, when they actually get started, they're pretty damn good on the phone. Yeah. It's just they don't get started. Yeah, it's that procrastinating. It it's, uh, yeah, they just, they're just not on it enough. And, um, you know, it's, I don't know what that is. Ultimately, it comes to some form of fear mm-hmm. that people, for whatever reason. Rejection, maybe. Rejection. Maybe they're not going to get them on the phone. Maybe it's going to be a, a no, which, hey, the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but quite frankly, we're not used to getting any no's. <laughs> but, and the more that you work at it, the harder you go, um, the less it hurts. You know, just like in sports, I always tell people, when you're giving it all you got, you're not going to get hurt. When you're tippy-toeing around trying to, to play comfortably, that's when you get hurt. What we love more than anything is for someone to be coachable and teachable. Um, that's huge. Like we would rather have someone with less skills but is teachable, coachable than someone that's highly skilled but wants to do it their own way. Um, what's maybe a good story that you have uh, from being out in the field or from coaching somebody over the phone where someone was just incredibly coachable and you kind of saw them go through that progression of like not getting good results to all of a sudden was just knocking it out of the park? 
Perfect example is th this has happened probably since our boot camp training. Okay. You know, Tyler and I, we lead a boot camp training with some of our new coordinators that come into town. And we had a new guy, uh, Justin Flagg. You know, he did a good job at boot camp. I think he did. Yeah. And this is a key. When, when you are a salesperson and you are doing a very good job, for your coach or for the trainer, the better the sales guy is doing, the more training and coaching you can provide. When someone's sure. sloppy and they're just kind of all over the place, yeah. it's like you don't even know where to start. Yeah. It's those fine tuning elements mm -hmm. to the sale. Soft skills. The soft skills. Yeah. Those things make such a huge difference. And so we had, we had a new guy come, Justin <coughs> Flagg. He went back to Florida. And just a few of the minor changes that we helped him with, I watched the guy go 100% in the field. Yeah. Um, and those things are, you know, I think about Maximus. He was a guy that when he, when he fought in battle as a general, would come off the field and allow his men to talk to him and point out to him where he could have fought better or been better or led better, and he was already at the top of his game. Wow. So that type of humility, yeah. To even for me as a trainer with you guys, mm -hmm. you know, when we're at training, you know, Tyler, you can pull me aside and say, hey, man, you, you were you trained them this way when really this is what I found in the field. Sure. So that humility of always being open and knowing that you can get better. If the day that you arrive is the day that you start going back down the hill. Absolutely. They say ego is the enemy. Absolutely. And that's, and that's true. I think you touched on a, an interesting point there, and you talked about when someone is not performing at a high level, not being able to train them as well. It's so true because in these boot camps that we do, if we have someone and they're performing one of our scripts, and they're performing in front of everybody, so it's uncomfortable, and so they're going to be a little bit more nervous than they would normally doing it out in the field. Um, but when they just butcher the script and they just do a terrible job performing it, I take very little notes like literally my notes are like learn the script right Get like the basics, even man. though you know that person could perform it when they don't perform in front of you you don't ha you don't really have anything to to go from versus the person that performs it extremely well now you're getting into like the hey there was a pause that you used in this moment if you would have paused like an extra two seconds and made eye contact with one of those people it would have been freaking like just next level. Or like, yep. hey, the inflection of your voice when you said it this, if you would have stopped on a downward inflection versus upward, mm -hmm. game changer. Like that, at that point, you're taking that person from like A to A to A plus, which is just a game changer when they get out on the field as far as their conversion ratios and, and close ratios and stuff like that. But that other person that didn't perform it, it's like they didn't even give themselves the opportunity to be trained. And so I think a lot of that obviously goes down to mastering the basics. Like you got to know the script to even be able to start getting trained on the higher level Absolutely. ideas. And so how important are, are just nailing the basics when you're going out in the field with people? I call it being prepared. Uh, preparation in anything that we do, especially in sales, being prepared knowing the script and knowing the basics is absolutely step one in sales. If you cannot perform your scripts, know your scripts out of a dead sleep, if your tongue does not have that muscle memory, you absolutely are cutting your income in half or worse. Yeah. Absolutely. Sales and, and the top 20% of salespeople execute on the very small things because the basics and um, the foundation of that sales practice is already in place and have been in place for a long it's like time. Unconscious at that point. It's, it's just, you don't even you think open your about mouth it, and it just comes out, which gives you the ability to then focus on those little things. Like you can focus on things like eye contact because you're not focused on like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what's the next sentence? What's the next sentence? Oh my god, oh my god, what's the next word? I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Which we've all been there, but but once you get and it's only through practice and through mm -hmm. that preparation. What's that quote that you always say about? performing yeah it's uh, Vince Lombardi it's one of my favorite quotes it's the will to win must be great but the will to prepare to win must be greater mm -hmm. um, it, you know one of the other things that that I that came to mind that as we were sitting here talking is I think it's a gift to be ultra aware of your surroundings mm -hmm. um, you know I, I meet people some are very aware some are not uh, but learning and practicing to be ultra observant of a situation 
the way someone walks in a room, the speed in which they walk, knowing the attitude that they enter the room, knowing there's so much you can pick up from people uh, and navigate that quick relationship. Some sales cycles are long and it, yeah. it requires, you know, fostering a relationship over weeks and months. Um, my personality doesn't do well with that. I don't think yours does either. Our personalities is a quicker sales cycle. That's why with what we sell, we're so good at it. Yeah. It fits our personality. Um, but we're ultra aware. Mm -hmm. You have a shorter period of time to pick up all that information that comes in that room. You've got to do it quickly. So I think a lot of people kind of have blinders on sometimes because they're thinking about the objective of, of the sale mm -hmm. so much, you really are not open enough to receive what that person can tell you in so many other ways than, than what they verbalize to you. One of those buying signals would be one of those, you know, being aware of, of, of your surroundings is when you're in that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, sale environment, uh, catching those buying signals. And I know what's one thing that you've often talked about, uh, that it's almost humorous when you're observing an agent uh, out in the field and you're catching those buying signals and you know that I'm not sure if they have yet or not in their ability to just shut up. Like, when the person has displayed oh, obvious buying signals and they, keep going. And, and they just keep going and going and you're like, dude, just <laughs> yeah, it's stop, like, I'm gonna just drop stop talking. You. <laughs> uh, but that's huge. Worse. But yeah. that's huge to be able to notice and understand that, okay, now's the time to go ahead and close and, and yeah. get on down the road yeah. uh, versus you can you can lose a sale you can totally by lose just a sale. vomiting, verbally vomiting Absolutely. all over. Let me, get, let me give you an example yeah. too. And, and you know, in, in a lot of sales, you have different levels of sales. You can, you can sell this tier, that tier, or this product, or that product, or at this level. You know, perfect example is having someone that you know that's committed, they're buying, but you see a commission and now you're trying to sell the spouse oh, yeah. and, 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 and they, they agree to the spouse maybe, <laughs> but not at the level that you want them. And then yeah. they just, at the end of it, they, they get so frustrated with the pressure of the sale. Look, you, people make a decision to purchase rather than, they feel much better about making the purchase mm -hmm that decision that they decided I want to buy this rather than anyone that if I feel you selling me, yeah. I might buy that product, but then I can guarantee you I'm going to turn around and return it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop that contract, whatever it is, just as soon as I can. So one of the biggest things I see that people make a mistake is do not get greedy, yeah. man, help people. Keep your focus on providing the service, the product, whatever it is for the person and learn to listen to exactly what they need. They will tell you what they need if you listen. And definitely when they make their choice and what they're telling you they want, mm -hmm. and you're trying to tell them it's something different, man, unless it's hurting them or their family, let them make their decision. People love to buy, but hate to be sold. That's it. And a lot of that is just the confusion. Like all of a sudden you walked in and they, they were interested, they were ready to go, just tell me where to sign but then you gave them so much more extra information about what else is out there that they're like, well, I don't, I don't know which one I want now. Like mm -hmm. now I need to think about it yep. when, when they were already ready to go. So it's, it's being able to, again, be aware of those buying signals and just close it. Like when you've got the, when you've got the product sold, sell it. Uh, and then move on later on down the road and having those further, further conversations. Um, what are some other, uh, as we close, uh, what are some other things that you think um, sales managers, sales leaders, sales coaches, sales trainers, whatever you want to give the title to, the, to those people. What are some of the, the mistakes you think um, that they could make uh, in, in not training or not leading uh, their salespeople the right way? I think the biggest thing, man, is, is people not, you, you spoke about it already. It's finding out why they're doing this. Mm -hmm. Why are they in this profession? Why are they selling this yeah. product? Um, I think a lot of people in careers, just because of the, with human resources and the way life is at this time with people being busy, um, I think there's a failure in connecting with your, exactly. with your people. Yeah. And so I can't really help a guy if I don't know where he's at in his life, what he's going through. 
uh, at home maybe or, or difficulty or any adversity that he's going through or has been through. Um, I like to get to know people, man. Get to know your people that are in the trenches working with you and ultimately at the end of the day for you. Um, there's, there's no better way to get a, a committed team to you the number one being willing to do it yourself mm -hmm. and number two letting your guys know and your girls that you freaking care about them and what they're doing get down get down to the basics with their life yeah. find out where they are where they've came from and man go to work helping them there's no better way than to help someone put a bunch of money in their pocket because you did something for them not that you told them how to do it and they went and did it. You physically get in the field with them and, and do it and help put money in their pocket. I'm telling you, huge, huge difference in performance right oh, yeah. there. That's huge. I mean, there's such a huge difference between goal setting with someone versus knowing that person's family, knowing exactly not just how much money they want to make, but what they're going to do with that money. Like, oh, they want to add on to their house because they're hoping to be able to have another kid at some point in the next couple of years. Absolutely. You know, and the wife's name is this, or the husband's name is that, and they got two other kids named this and that. And to be able to actually like know those yeah, people, man, it, it's just like your willingness to even care about it. Not yep. not necessarily that you know you have to be able to like be able to recall. You know, in an instant, like, hey, tell me everything about Bob. Uh, Bob's wife's name is this, and it's, it's like, but just the ability to ask those questions because you genuinely care. Exactly. Like you want to, you want to know, and and to be able to then pull on that later on, like when they are struggling to make the phone calls, and like, hey, mm -hmm. remember, remember, you know, when I was out there with you in, in Iowa, and we talked about, you know, you wanted to do this because you were going to add on to your house and all that yeah, stuff, man. like getting them yeah. to like remember, like, oh crap, like this yeah. is why. This yeah. is why I'm doing all this. Absolutely. You gotta you always change. gotta go back to the why. And you know, it something that comes to my mind is, you know, it could be the spouse. Um yeah. I, with with married people that are in your organization, man, it's so critical to understand like a little bit about the spouse and what they're doing with their life. You know, if you if you have a, a sales guy and and or a sales girl and her husband wants to start his own business and she's going to help him do it but she's got to earn she's they need to make an extra hundred grand over the next two years to help him launch that business yeah. that is a huge why right there mm -hmm. man you can talk about that and go back to that yeah. um it's like sometimes and i'd say probably all the time but uh the majority of the time let's say um the inefficient things end up being the most efficient uh, mm -hmm. The things like sitting down and getting to know someone and getting to know uh, about their relationships and about yep. their goals, not just monetarily, but their goals in life. Yep. Those things that take time. Like It's yep. not efficient to do that. It's not efficient yep. to spend some of your time going through that type of conversation when you could be you know, getting through role plays and giving feedback and all that. Mm -hmm. But those inefficient things become extremely effective and, mm -hmm. and efficient down the road. One last thing that I'll say, and I don't know how much time we have, but is... Be very intentional with at sporadic times when you when people would not think that you'd be thinking about them, man. Think about them. Reach out. Touch them with something significant. Let them know that they're on your mind, uh, and and just connect with people. Connections. Because we, we say all the time, you know, the reason why we created this podcast is because being in sales is lonely, uh, and you'll go through stretches where you can feel like you're on an island. Yeah. Uh, especially if you don't work out of an office or out of a certain branch or location and you're just out there on the road. Uh, it's a lonely place to be. And that's why we created this podcast was to show appreciation uh, because we know that the majority of sales coaches, sales leaders, sales managers aren't showing that appreciation on a, on a daily basis. But uh, just to be in the profession of sales alone uh, says a lot about the kind of person you are. Um, and we have a tremendous amount uh, of respect for that. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this episode. This is a little bit of a different take coming from more of a managerial or training or coaching aspect, uh, but I think even just the uh, average salesperson would get a lot from this, maybe in what they're not being, how they're not being led or <laughs> not being coached, uh, but maybe some things that they could, you know, I don't know, subtly like say like, hey, um, boss, maybe you should check out this podcast. Uh, I think it might, think it may help a little bit. Uh, but definitely awesome to have Mr. Nathan Wells on the podcast with us, the owner of the Sales Wolf Skull. Uh, it's rightful owner. Uh, but guys, with that, this is episode 92 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Again, I'm your host, Tyler Harris.
Nathan Wells, pleasure we to be here. We are the Sales Wolves. Oh.